So hey there and happy Boxing Day. If you're in the United States and you're not quite sure what Boxing Day is, it is what we have in Canada and the UK. It's pretty much like everybody got their... I'm not quite sure how it gets its name. Maybe everybody got their boxes after Boxing Day. That, that's, we'll go with that. That sounds good. That, that's what it is. We'll go with that one. And uh, if, if you're over in anywhere except Atlantic Canada, you're probably out shopping and doing some really cool stuff right now. Uh, there are probably a lot of my Canadian viewers there and UK viewers and YouTubers that will be doing like haul videos for Boxing Day today. And I can't do mine until tomorrow because I'm in Atlantic Canada, the only place in the world that celebrates Boxing Day sales on the 27th. I know it's really cool that they get an extra day, but I want to shop. Oh, you know I do. Uh, <clears throat> that's the thing. I, I'm going to be going out really early. Uh, my better half's like, you know, we can go to like at 6 type thing. I'm like, no, it opens at 6. We are there for 6. I'm in that line. Like, here's how it usually goes. I'll get on the line <clears throat> and, and I'll get in the car. <laughs> and she'll stay in the car. And when the line starts to move, then she comes. I'm the sucker that goes and grabs my Tim's and uh, like this at like 5.30 in the morning when it's really cold, especially if you live here in Canada where we do get it kind of cold and it's been snowing for the last couple of days. So today, before we can go anywhere, I got to go out and shovel us out. It's kind of like my rite of passage as Canadian and as a, she's going to be doing the driving type of thing. <clears throat> so that'll be fun. Uh, today I'm going to make a podcast, kind of something different, kind of something kind of fun. I want to do a video basically talking about some of my, uh, some of my favorites, some of the things that make me happy. So we're going to look at some movies, some games. You're going to get a little bit more insight into some of the stuff that I like, be good or bad. But that is what we're going to do with this. This is how it's going to roll today. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. We're going to, so there's going to be a little bit of stuff for everyone. I think we're going to talk about like the future. We're going to talk about gaming. And here's the thing. Christmas is an especially stressful time of year for some people. Not everybody is as hyper, like, can dra drag out and be their inner eight-year-old that I am. Not just at Christmas, but pretty much all of the time. She has to live with me, so she, she knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but <clears throat> it is okay if your Christmas this year, if you don't feel it, if you uh, really haven't gotten it that's right now it's okay if that that happens right now because like I mentioned on my last video you don't know what's around the next corner and uh, that could be your that could be your that could be your saving grace that could be the love of your life that could be the thing that you, the new job the thing that makes you really excited about going on but that's the thing these times when things seem you know things can be magnified at this time of year for some people because it is such a time where elation and joy is thought of so much that you get some people so that other people that really don't feel it right now they feel extra down or extra depressed because of that fact and uh, I get that but understand that that's just right now you will feel that again you will feel that joy you'll feel that elation you feel that happiness I really truly do believe that and uh, maybe I'm kinda like just a, <clears throat> a silly dreamer that way but uh, indulge me <clears throat> right now in this time that you maybe either you're really excited you're having a fantastic time or you're not so you're not feeling you're not feeling it right now that's okay because this time is what you're gonna look back on when things are going really well and you're gonna find that you got strength from a time that you didn't realize you were going to get it. And it's going to be a badge that you wear. And I'm not somebody that's just saying this that because they're, uh, you know, because it's something to, to say or, or just <clears throat> like lip service. Here's the thing, guys. I have gone through a lot of struggles myself. <clears throat> See this back here, the TV and the movies and all that stuff? Well, Let's be a, uh, let's be frank here. Uh, I had a time when this wasn't even a dream in my mind, it wasn't even a fantasy. I was going through a very rough period in my life, and the 
the thought of being actually able to to buy something or actually live in a house with warm heat and stuff like that was something that I wasn't sure was going to happen again. So, but it did. And you know, I can look back on those times that were a little bit rougher and I can look back and smile. And I do. I do have to look back and smile. I was like, man, I, I, it was an incredible badge of honor to get there. And uh, I do say that, yeah, no, those were really rough times. And I still, I'm still going to enjoy the hell of them because that's the type of personality that I am, that I got. Uh, I'll get all, all sucky for a bit because I'm like an eight-year-old boy. And then I get overly excited like Christmas. And I get like that on, on a daily basis. So, wow, I sound so bipolar when I say it like that. But <laughs> she's like, you sound totally group. <laughs> but no, be happy. Enjoy this time. Enjoy this time with me here. Watch the video. Listen to the video. However you want to do it. However you roll, we're going to do it that way. Thanks for watching. We're going to just hit those credits. I'll be right back. And let's get into a few of my favorite things. You know, those happy places that we all need to go. Hi there and welcome back, which I'm saying because I just got back, so in a way I guess I'm looking at the camera, so I'm kind of welcoming me back because through the magic of editing, you're still here, hopefully. If, well, if not, then how can you hear me and we've got some kind of like weird time kind of thing coming up. What is she reading? <clears throat> she, my better half is giggling in the background. She just looked at a, a news story about like, a deer that gets hit and goes airborne and hits a person, which I think is code for somebody actually got hit by one of Sam's flying reindeer. We're gonna go with that. Uh huh. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. That's the true story. The media is not telling you. <clears throat> anyway, some of my favorite things. We're gonna go into that first. Um, Actually, in a second, for you guys out there that have been watching for a while and have been thinking about going into making YouTube videos or uh, kind of wondering what it's going to be like, here, let's go with that first. Uh, it's really, it's a lot of fun and you'll get to meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, a lot of people wonder, like, you know, do I have to go on the camera? You know, can I, do, well, you don't have to go on the camera. I'm a big ham. I don't mind going on camera. I'll be honest with you. There have been some great, very successful YouTubers, and there still are, that you just hear their voice. You don't see them on camera at all. They, just, they do fantastic jobs on watching videos all the time. Um, Toddy Walnuts today, I don't think he has actually gone on. Maybe he has. I don't know this. But he, he, go, he does most of his collection videos from you behind. Uh, Movie Cave Dave actually spent a long time actually not being on camera at all and actually ended up going on later on. There's some people like me that pretty much started out going on, to, on camera because... What I did, and I, when I first started out, I just had like an iPhone, like an iPhone 4S, I think it was. And my videos were made with that. I had this like tiny iPhone, and I was making videos with that. And it, it was it was fun. There were, usually were shorter videos because I was just starting on YouTube, and you had like a time limit. You had to be under 15 minutes. Uh, then the time limit went off it after I made so many and got like so many subscribers. And I was like, whoa, at that time. But it's a, it's a fun thing. Now, understand. Remember you were in high school and there were like clicks and you're like, I can't wait to get to high school and get this kind of click thing behind me. You go, oh, it's so juvenile. And then you got to college and you said, oh, damn, it's, it's, it's kind of there. And then you got to work and you're like, oh, there's people that kind of gravitate towards people. You know, it's human nature. Uh, that happens on YouTube as well. There are certain, there are groups of people that kind of stick within their groups. And there are groups that don't like other groups and blah, 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 blah. You drama, 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 drama. But, uh... Just have fun, you know. Don't get caught up in some like there's negativity for everything. Don't get, don't let yourself get caught up in that. Just become. I like to stay positive, and uh, I watch videos from people I like, and, and I kind of like, and I talk to people, and I talk to them. Some people that I talk to, uh, like that I've got to know personally, 
and we talk outside of uh, outside of here. Because, and not just you know not just other people that do videos, but people that I've that I've met through like through, through the comment section and stuff that actually I'll be talked about uh, different things. That's been really good because every time I see their comments, it's like hearing from an old friend, and uh, then we'll, we'll tend to catch up. So there's a great positivity to that. So just keep it positive. Like don't go drama ish. Keep you know keep it really positive. There's some people that do the drama videos, and that's what they do. That's kind of their thing. Um, a lot of those people kind of help to create and drama themselves in order to draw views to their channel. Uh, not the type of people that I that I watch or that I normally talk about on here. But I mean like some of the, you know, the bigger YouTubers that do kind of like this uh, <clears throat> the weird stuff that actually hurts uh, the different causes and stuff that the uh, that they usually end up talking about. It usually ends up being a negative effect. But that's that's YouTube. <clears throat> that's like it, it's a new beast. It's the new television. And that's the way that I see it. Is that like this for years ago like People would like watch like, and like, it's not too many years ago. When I'm one of those people would end up watching like PBS or something like that. See uh, Cisco and Ebert at the movies. Uh, you just watch, you know, guys and later on Ebert and Roper, and uh, they get, that's you know they got a lot of their movie reviews and their stuff from from places like that. Uh, you got to see like every once a year, once a year they do like their top ten list, and you see some people and like some news reports that would show you like kind of the new stuff that was coming out. You'd uh, look into like a comic book or a magazine, and you'd see like. Uh, Okay, these are the new Saturday morning cartoons that are coming on. You get the uh, the two part fall edition of TV Guide that would actually show you what the new TV shows and what's coming up are, and like that's how you keep up with things. But YouTube tends to like take the place of like all of that right now. Uh, you want movie reviews? You come on YouTube. You want to see like the latest stuff that's coming out? You're more than likely there's going to be a YouTube channel that deals with that. Probably several. If you're a gamer, you're going to have lots of ones to check through. Whether you just want to see a review of a game, an unboxing of a game, uh, news on upcoming games, or people doing actual gameplay, like you know, like Falgar does actually, uh, and then you, you know there's stuff there for uh, for that as well. You get to see people come on here and do like roundtable discussions, like you would see back in the day when you get experts on on different stuff, and just people that wanted to talk about stuff. You see it on the news and when, uh, all the time. You see people like talking on different issues, or you can go watch Philip DeFranco. Or a bunch, or guys that are that like that, or clever, or a, a lot of these other people that do uh, that do these things and these and these lists, and some are clickbait, some are a little bit more in depth than that, and that's a, uh, and that that's the thing you've you've been given a voice, and it's a fantastic thing to have. I mean, I cannot imagine. I am a guy that would have had to got my voice out there somehow. I'm a writer. Uh, I was an actor. Uh, that uh, I'm a I consider myself a creative person. And uh, a person that is very outspoken. So, especially when it comes to stuff like movies and TV and video games, uh, my better half. Uh, when I when I met when I met her, I was in. I was really into like to, to wrestling. So I got her. I actually sucked her into the wrestling thing. She had never watched wrestling before, and she thought of it as like kind of this lower brow type of humor, type of like entertainment thing. And uh, she didn't know a lot about it, but. <clears throat> We got, you know, we weren't even together at the time. We were like just watching stuff, or hanging, or watching movies, and I didn't know that she didn't like horror movies as much as uh, as she did like horror movies. It kind of freaked her out. So she said, "Hey, you like that wrestling thing? Why don't we watch this tonight?" And we ended up watching like uh, TNA during the Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff era. We watched all that together. Um, I actually downloaded some new TNA stuff today. Well, not really downloaded. I DVR'd it, is what you call it, because we have the uh, Fight Network, and they uh, they're the ones that run the uh, that now so uh i kind of dvr'd some episodes of it so i'm thinking maybe later on we haven't watched any a bit they did a best of 2016 we should watch that like you know just see where they are because they're starting they're kind of starting fresh they're starting over like they, they used they were they have a new like head of creative and there's some really interesting stuff that's going on there right now maybe i'll do some wrestling videos down the road not sure if you guys like that or not but uh I do, so I, it's my channel. I would do it. You don't have to watch those videos, but uh, I would recommend it and I greatly appreciate it if you did. Uh, I was also pretty much a hardcore gamer for a long time, which I haven't done in a while, but I'm finding myself being more excited about gaming again recently. I find that it gets me to this, this creative spot that I like. Um, and uh, that's really helped. I was like, I was, you know, I was more of a casual gamer the last few years, and in the last like six to eight months, like there were some stressy times and stuff, but I found that when I wanted to set, center myself, sometimes the movie was okay, but sometimes I just still, my mind was still working. 
I was watching it and I was like kind of distracting or I needed that focus. And uh, gaming does that for me. It does give me that focus sometimes that I that I just need. Sometimes it's writing. Sometimes you know, I, there's different outlets that I that I have. But you're gonna see like differences in my channel because of these things that, that make me happy. So let's talk about some things that make me happy right now, and then we're gonna go on to well, we got a few different segments that I'm gonna do. But let's bring on the happiness. So one of my all-time favorite things, my all-time favorite shows, and that uh, resonates with me as somebody that did this years before the show was created, and I'm sure a lot of you guys did too, was I would do what's called now riffing. I would ride, me and my cousin especially, we'd get like movies and we'd get bad movies. But I was always a guy <clears throat> that would sit back and kind of like make fun of and make jokes about the movies that we were watching. I was the ham, I was the class clown. I was a clown when it came to like my uh, my family. I was always the, the joker type. <clears throat> so uh, people actually liked watching movies with me because of that. They would seek out bad movies that we'd be able to like watch and then I discovered Mystery Science Theater 3000 and where did I discover it? I actually discovered it at Blockbuster Video yes the long gone sadly very much missed Blockbuster Video I was up there one day and he had the actual the, I went up there because the Virtual Boy was uh, <laughs> was being like shown and I wanted to see that they had like a, a demo of Mario Tennis so I go in and there's like a bunch of like these uh, these videos there and I see this one here, and it's Mystery Science Theater. It's a VHS, and it's uh, and they got like two of them there. There's Mitchell, and there's Pop People. I kid you not. These are the first two I got. Um, they were like about twenty twenty five dollars each. Um, so I dug in deep, and I uh, I bought those two, and then I went over and looked at the Virtual Boy, and got a headache for about an hour because, oh my God, if I ever find one for really cheap, a Virtual Boy, I'd definitely get one just for like collecting purposes but uh if anybody has a virtual bot wants to send me one feel free to in <laughs> comment in the comment box down below because those things are hilarious <clears throat> and uh horrible but uh i'm a collector anyway so mystery science theater is one that i really liked and i love the fact when uh, i remember one year my only gift that i got i said i had lean times like really lean times the only gift that i received was a mystery science theater dvd that was it that was all i received for christmas that year and i was super happy because it was mystery science theater so <clears throat> long ways from the days of the ps4 which uh-huh i had a good christmas this year uh i had a really good christmas this year i had like uh, I had my family by me i had my better half she's like right there and had my kids had my cats and that's kind of what made Christmas for me and I knew you guys were there so that was really cool and then I got like the things that you know we did like London which was like my dream trip so that would have been like excellent there but I ended up getting some like mom got me some vinegar syndrome so did hand and then I got like the ps4 which I have been playing every night after she goes to bed now for about like uh yeah, <laughs> every night. So here we go. First up is Mystery Science Theater. So this is the Turkey Day collection. This is actually a really cool one. And why did I mention the uh, first two ones that I uh, that I got? Well, it's because there's like they just have some really cool ones. And uh, there is one. Is this the one? Is this the one? This isn't the one, is it? No, this is the other one. I have another one actually that actually has a bonus disc and the bonus disc is I kid you not Pop People of Mitchell uh, so that was super exciting to get now, this is the Turkey Day collection so what do we got here we got like uh, Jungle Goddess Painted Hills which is an old Lassie film Screaming Skull and of course Squirm Squirm is actually a, fr a pretty fun movie I do have that on its own in the NGM one but I have to upgrade that to either Arrow or uh, Scream Factory, I think they, they both might have put that one out. Did they both put that out in? Yeah. Squirm. Didn't they both put out Squirm? I think Arrow and Scream Factory. No, Arrow put it out. Scream Factory put it out too? Yes. I think they did too, yeah. <laughs> so it's a movie about like worms. It's actually really funny. It's it's really cool. Uh, but there's like a... You always do cool stuff with this. We got like a... You always do these posters, so... Cartoony type posters. I love these. Squirmans especially really cool. 
and you can cut them each in their own uh, individual cases like this. Now, if you buy the tins from uh, actual ship factory themselves, then they'll actually send you usually a uh, a paper like case, like because they come in like normally like these paper cases, uh, you know the normal paper sleeves. So what they'll do is they'll send you that, and the carpet sleeves you can actually put it together and you put the case off and make it as kind of like a something that you look at on its own, and then you uh, see, I keep this here on here. See, I try to anyway. This and underneath you see the set of love there. <clears throat> but I love mystery science theater. It's a thing that makes me extremely, extremely happy. I have always enjoyed it. Who is my favorite host? I tend to be humor wise, I guess I think I'm more Joel. Although I do like them both, and Mike is really, really fun, kinda like funny, positive type character but there's something about Joel that I kinda like. It's kinda laid back type of humor. It's very much a stoner humor, I think, with Joel. Who's your favorite Mystery Science Theater host? Joel or Mike? Mike's more like the college, young type, uh, grinning humor guy. And Joel is the kind of the laid back stoner guy that uses a lot of like prop comedy and music. Joel is like carrot top and funny with uh, more musical influences. Uh, when they did Mike, they tended to move away from the prop thing because that was kind of Joel's thing that was part of his stand-up routine that's why that he got things called well the prop thing if you guys don't if you've seen Mystery Science Theater though, what that really was was the invention exchange and after a while they just kind of let that go and just dealt more skits and stuff like that now some other of the later some Mystery Science Theater ones have some great like riffing and some great stuff on it but here's the thing that really isn't good they actually took and it's not the actor's fault really the um, Mystery Science Theaters went onto the Sci-Fi Network. It was saved by the Sci-Fi Network, and they, they made them like they mandated more science fiction content be in it. So you got to see stuff like uh, them being chased around, and it just didn't make a lot of sense. But like Clayton Forster left. Uh, Mary J. did the best that she could with what she had, and she was a very funny uh, one who had been on the show before doing different characters, uh, including, of course, you know, in the brain that wouldn't die. She was, a, I think, she was the head actually, um, but it. Yeah, she got to play Pearl, which was like a Dr. Forster's uh, mom. But then we got to see like other characters, like you know the Brain Guy and Professor Bebo and stuff like that. All those different ones. But uh, there we go. Mystery Science Theater is one of the things I really, really love. You guys like it? What's your favorite episode? A lot of people love Mitchell. A lot of people love Pod People. And uh, yeah, if you're a Mystery Science Theater fan, you immediately said those two words that that go. With uh, so, just saying. <clears throat> I just watched recently today the Doctor Who uh, Christmas special. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. I am what they would call back in the day a Whovian. And there are a certain population of like, uh, out there that say, you know, that, you know that's a negative concept. You know, we're not Whovians, we're whatever. If you watch Doctor Who. And you collect it, or you watch it for years. You're a Whovian. That's 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 what it originally was. That's what it is. I decree it. <laughs> Whovian. Get used to it. <clears throat> it's a good word. It's a happy word. It means you like a show that's pretty freaking awesome. And it is an awesome, awesome show. I do enjoy Doctor Who quite a bit. They have hinted that Capaldi may be leaving after the next series. Uh, I'll be sad to see him go because I really do like Capaldi. But I think Moffat needs to get like a, a break from it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go. Uh, there's lots of different ideas of like who, what the Doctor could be next. And I think they're gonna. I think they'll go with the, like a younger Doctor. Uh, they go like along the like kind of like a David Tennant or a Matt Smith type, where he's going to be like a he's going to be a younger guy, kind of good looking. Someone's going to really bring across the uh, the female fans as well, and like the and the younger audience, basically the younger audience, because um, Peter Capaldi is a fantastic actor. But here's the thing: some of the audience that like the cute Matt Smith or the cute David Tennant didn't stay on for uh, for it, and that's not you know. 
I'm not just saying that, but that's actually kind of what happened, which is kind of sad, really. But uh, I think a lot of it had to do with some of the way the writing was going at the time, too. So you can't really blame Capaldi because, you know, the first Doctor himself is an older man. And uh, I know it's a new generation, and it's kind of done slightly differently than that. But uh, I think Capaldi is, although he seems like he's one of the older guys that's played the Doctor, I have actually actually do see him as slightly more youthful than, say, Matt Smith. Yeah, Capaldi wears the hoodie, he's got the youngest type jacket, he plays guitar. He's the cool doctor, uh, in my opinion. He's like the really kind of cool doctor. And uh, I'm going to miss that. But uh, this is canine. This is what my cousin got me last year. One of the things he got me last year for Christmas was a uh, canine. It's a 48-page book on canine as well in a Doctor Who trivia game. So Doctor Who is another thing that I found really, like this is this type of video really is, could be a Thanksgiving video. You could watch this video again on Thanksgiving and be like, wow, these are things to be thankful for. But it's Boxing Day because we're gonna. It's my Boxing Day thankful, happy, favorite video because I could do that. <clears throat> video games. Let's talk video games. I have a small collection of games that I really, really like. And uh, some are for systems. I got some are for systems I don't have right now, but that doesn't matter. Let's go with the systems I don't have right now first. Uh, you get a kind of a, a feel for my type of stuff. So first off is uh, for the Xbox One. I don't have the Xbox One. I did have one, but I got like the PS4 now. So I'm, I'll get an Xbox One S probably down the road. So what I, but when I got rid of the system I didn't get rid of like this game here that's a rare replay uh, the, if you have an Xbox one you should have this do you, do you have one you, did you did you get the game did you did you, uh, did, did you get the game yet no no well see this this is like 999 like usually now and it's probably one of the best if not the best exclusive that the Xbox has so get it well I, I can wait you can you can go out I'll, I can wait here. You can, you can pause the video. You can come back. You can, you can thank me later. Rare was a fantastic company that did a lot of really great games. They did a lot of classic stuff. Unfortunately, when Microsoft bought them up, they ended up going to do a lot of more Kinect stuff. Not a lot of stuff kind of like that. You Really the classic stuff you wanted to see Rare do. Um, but in their day, Rare did some really great stuff. They did some great computer games, some great games. So, what type of games did they do? What did they have? Well, let's list a couple of the games that Rare did. Uh, so we have Cameo, Elements of Power, which of course was Xbox 360 one. Perfect Dark, you know, what classic shooters on here. Uh, RC Pro-Am, I remember that one. Such wicked controls on that one. though, so hard to use. <laughs> Lunar Jetman, Killer Instinct, they did those. Go, Saber Wolf, uh, a bunch of Jetman ones. Viva Pinata, which is uh, Wes's favorite. Uh, you got both Viva Pinata games on here. And then there's the thing that is the greatest of all time. And that is, do you know it? Can you see it? Oh yeah, it's Battletoads. Battletoads rocks. Battletoads is cool. And for me, that was one of the big NES games that I played. Me and my cousin would like play tons of Battletoads. And uh, then on Super NES, we played that Battletoads, which is, isn't on this, by the way. Which is a shame. They do have the arcade Battletoads, which is really cool. I put a few quarters into that one. Um... So it was really cool to like to see that. So again, very very good game. If you got an Xbox One, pick it up. It's really really cool. Um, when and where it's Xbox Ones are backwards compatible, or if you got an old Xbox 360 or something like that. The Gears of War franchise. It's really kind of a fun shooter. I like the story to that. I love the way that it's done. I like those chainsaw guns. Uh, violence. Uh, but the Gears games are well done, and the. Uh, and really good, like uh, villains with that one. I like that one. It's not my favorite. My favorite is, and they don't make them anymore. Is uh, the where they they did this Resistance series uh, on the please please blah 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 PlayStation Three, and the Resistance series was really really fun. I followed the story, and it was just one. The controls for me were perfect. I found it really intuitive. It was really easy to suck me into the game. I played them all through. Uh, there wasn't a resistance game that I that I had to put down with frustration. I actually managed to get through all of them. I loved the games, and I was uh, saddened when they said that they weren't going to continue you know, with the resistance franchise. And uh, they did a great job with that. So uh, if you got a PlayStation 3 and you haven't like checked out the resistance games, I really think they're really good games. 
I like the storyline, I like the way that it went, and uh, give them a chat. They're really fun to check out. Next up are my Wii U games. I love the Wii U. <clears throat> I'm an unabashed fan of the Wii U. It is a great system. Uh, the last couple of days I've played back and forth between like Mario and, uh, and Uncharted and Grand Theft Auto, usually on nights. Uh, so last night was like after 5 in the morning when I got to sleep. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but hey, it's my vacation. It's I can do this stuff. It's fun. You don't pay like money for these systems and never use them. That's what they're there for, right? <clears throat> so here are three of my very favorite games on the Wii U. One that's not even opened, really, because uh, I haven't had the chance to play this one yet. Because I've just had so much other stuff to play, and I really want to. Because it's this is one of the reasons that I act. I'm gonna leave it last. It's the reason, my serious reason for having Wii U in the first place is the third game. Well, there's a couple of these games, right? Sorry. So first up is Super Mario 3D World. I love this game. Uh, it really did go back to what I thought the Super Mario games uh, should be like. I know a lot of people wanted another Galaxy, and I was like, no, let, let's go back to this kind of like this platform, this 3D platforming style. I do like it, and I'm very excited about Switch as a new Mario game. It looks very much like a uh, kind of successor to the to the Mario 64, which I'm very excited about, but I really really think this was a really fun game. I've played this one, I don't know how many times, and I get stuck on certain levels. Uh, I need my kids here for some of this, because uh, I, uh, but the first time, like, the first time I played that, like, one where you get on, like, that sea creature, and you're, like, going down, it's really kind of, it's kind of cool, and you're, it's just a small level, but I would so get killed so often, it was such a simple level, and when I rebought the system, and I played it yet, I got through it in one, like, in the first try, and I'm like, oh my god, this was so easy. Oh, uh, how come I didn't find it easy before? But uh, I do. Sometimes I get frustrated and I have to put it away for a while. I'm like, okay, I can't play this game for a bit. It's just, it's fun, but it's frustrating. I need some space. I need to clear my head and come back. And uh, I always do, and then I have a ton of fun with this game here. Uh, also really fun, because they got some, like, Toad levels on this. And uh, the Toad levels actually made their own game. They became, like, uh, Captain Toad treasure tracker which I do recommend I actually played a demo of it um, very cool stuff and uh, I know the switch is coming out now in uh, in March and so a lot of people are getting excited about that so this is the right time to pick up a Wii U and to start collecting it it's become a legacy system now uh, there's nothing else being made for it there's no more being produced so if you don't get one now then down the road it's probably going to be more expensive to buy and that's the thing uh, <clears throat> And so here you go, Super Mario 3D World. It's a fantastic game for the whole family. One that's on my system already preloaded on it. It's Super Mario Kart. And the new Mario Kart one, I think, is probably the best. I played this one all the way through. I've unlocked everything on that one. All the levels, all the characters, all the stuff <clears throat> has been unlocked. I played it here. I played it with my better half. I played it with my cousins. I played it with my kids. And one of your friends came over for like a weekend. And we sat down and we played for a couple hours. It was really fun to do. <clears throat> Next up is an exclusive to the Wii U one, and uh, no, it's not a Mario one, but it, but it is Lego City Undercover. Anybody that has seen the Lego movie and had got kicked out of that and really enjoyed it, would if you played Lego City Undercover, you'd kind of know that the Lego City, that the Lego movie is going to be good because that's just the humor for uh, for that movie, and it's very much like this thing is like known for having some load time issues, but I don't, it's worth it. It really is worth it. It's such a fun character. I mean, like, <clears throat> listen, to Chase McCain, yeah. Uh, it really uses the game pad really well. And uh, it's got a great fun story. It kind of lampoons the, uh, the, you know, the 80s and 90s action movies. It does a really good job of it. And TV shows, you get, like, all these kinds of cameos come in here. Like, only Lego can do, and it's just fantastic. Next up is the one that I was talking about. It has a seal on it. This was one that I had to search for because it went... It's harder to find for a bit. I think you can find my Best Buy now, though. If you can and you got a Wii U, please pick it up. If you don't, pick it up if you're going to buy a Wii U. This really is a quality, quality game. If you're a horror fan at all, you're going to need this game. Trust me, it's, it's, really, it's really good. And I know it came out on the other systems, but I got a PlayStation 4 and I had an Xbox One. I would never play the, this game on either one of those systems because the gamepad aspect of it really crucial for me to the playing of this game. <clears throat> it's 
it used the gamepad really well and it adds a level of like of scariness like when you're moving around <clears throat> the gamepad oh my god <clears throat> okay after I do this we're doing a break I'm gonna drink some tea then I'm gonna come back and not sound like I disappeared <clears throat> but it's zombie you fantastic game and of course it's about zombie the same way you spot in those Italian movies because it's cool this is set in my favorite place in the world it's set in London England and uh, you guys know that is my favorite that's that's my dream that's that's I'm living there one of these days that's that's it you guys in the UK prepare to be invaded by the by the professor I, I am coming um, zombie you is a great great game it's an awesome cover too uh, you just wake up and you're this character and you start and you run and you grab a backpack you get stuff you get like a you kind of got like like the flashlight and all that and you have to look around certain areas are really dark and you have to use the gamepad to look around the areas zombies can come it's really cool it really immerses you into that if that your character can die if your character dies your character stays within the game you wake up you're not the same character you're playing now a different character you don't have any of the stuff that you had before but your character that died does still have all that stuff so if you can make it and you can get back to where your other character died at you're gonna find that stuff and you're gonna have to loot your own dead character uh, it's actually really cool the way it's a very neat concept that they did, came up with and I didn't see it get enough like uh, like press like it should have I mean in the UK when they put out the the, the Wii U they actually did a zombie U edition of it uh, which is actually very cool loving that so zombie U is the other Wii U game <clears throat> that I <clears throat> that I love so before I go off I'll do my two PS4 games and they have two and you guys know what they are I having a lot of fun with both of these games um, first off is Grand Theft Auto 5 I haven't touched the story portion of this yet because I am having so much fun with the online I didn't I had no idea the online was this immersive and this fun and there's this many games and type of things that you can do and it's not just stealing the car anymore it's like Splatoon type driving around you're doing heights you're doing stunt ro rides you're jumping over things and you're carrying like rock launchers and you're shooting at other cars and vehicles and then you're switched over and you're the car and you're jumping over trying to knock the people off so before they shoot you with the rock launcher it's really really cool there's just so much to do and it's such a huge world and uh, people can make their own levels and stuff it's wrong. check this out there's a reason this is one of the best games ever made in my opinion especially for the newer generation Grand Theft Auto 5 it's definitely the best Grand Theft Auto ever and I in Vice City was before that that was my favorite game so story wise Vice City is still my favorite because I'm from the 80s and Vice City is all 80s music it's pretty much Scarface without calling it Scarface next up is Uncharted 4 Thief's End I do love this game I've got it's Nathan Drake and his uh, brother which is Sam Drake I think his name is uh, so Nathan Drake of course is Nolan North one of the best voice artists in the in gaming who's the other best voice artist in gaming Troy Baker who actually plays his older brother in this one here so you got Nathan uh, played by Nolan Drake who's actually uh, six years older than the guy that's playing his younger brother uh, Troy Baker trust me you see Troy Baker if you watch like you probably don't but if you're like me and you watch Pretty Little Liars you know Nolan North from there as well because of course he's the dad of one of the characters on the show uh, so you actually get to see Nolan North in person and you can see where the character was uh, he does look like a young Nolan North that's what he looks like but he's very much uh, it's kind of the style that he does too I think my better half sees like a lot of Nathan Fillion into the Nathan Drake character right that's who she'd say and the younger Nathan Fillion she would say would be a perfect choice like to play him in a movie <clears throat> uh, it's a great game it's uh, <clears throat> right up there I mean number two like I liked all the Uncharted games the number two was by far what the, as far as I've played to them at like the definitely the top game in the series but this one I, I think is gonna surpass it I'm not through it yet but uh, from what I can see so far it looks like it's gonna surpass it and it's gonna be really hard to do because uh, number two, where they went to Shambhala, and you were the, you know, the sequence on the on the train was amazing. Uh, there's just such great cinematics, and uh, wonderful like that I just love within the uh, in this series here. And I love the PlayStation Four; it has such a seamless interface. Uh, definitely the best controller, and I'll give you that as an extra special bonus right here. The three best controllers in this generation done in a in order. And number three is the Xbox One controller still a great controller it hasn't changed up a lot 
uh, the recent upgrade on the one on the 1s supposed to be slightly better than the one that they had before uh, the uh, number two beating that one is the Wii U Pro controller uh, actually has an amazing controller great battery life on that one uh, it's very much like an Xbox style controller but it just has a good feel to it it works really well it should have been marketed and placed within the Wii U system when it came out I think that that would have actually uh, actually brought more people in if they would have actually had like a standard controller along with the Wii, Wii U gamepad which seemed kind of gimmicky to people um, and of course the number one controller of this generation is definitely the PS4. The PS4 I like the, the, the I like the DualShock before but a lot of people thought that there's a lot of like there's things that really should have been done it didn't have a lot of weight to it it didn't really the uh, the way it was done made it didn't make it best for uh, for like different types of gaming and shooting shooters and FPSs and stuff like that but here's the thing they've really upgraded it they've done a lot of stuff with the new controller uh, they've mapped it out a lot um, just an amazing controller of course I can't put in stuff like the Xbox like pro controllers you know where you can actually do them yourself or any of those type things because I really don't have one of those those are $150 controllers and I'm not that hardcore I like my games to be uh, be fun but there are people out there if you're like um, if you're into like eSports and you're into that type of stuff then the you're probably gonna be getting a controller that's gonna map that you can map out specifically for uh, for the game that you're playing and I understand that that's when that becomes like I, when I first heard there's a hundred fifty dollar controller there I was like that's insane but then I see there's an ESPN actually has a, doing a channel which is eSports it's become a big thing now I uh, personally I used to play a little bit of Rocket League myself not really eSports category I can barely beat my kids so I wish <clears throat> but uh I do a great respect for those guys that do stuff that can go on there and play Rocket League and Smite and all those games and actually like Splatoon and just like really kind of go with that and uh, those are the people that actually really like the hardcore gamers they get the $150 controllers because they really want to map it to what they want it to be a lot of people I find that the game Overwatch right now that Blizzard put out recently has actually brought that in as well They've kind of like uh, really uh, worked into uh, into that aspect as well so I'm gonna go for a second drink some tea clear my throat we're gonna come back and talk about some movies and other stuff that that I find really fun I hope you guys are enjoying this video because I'm really enjoying making it and um, through the magic of editing it'll seem like no time and I'll be right back hey there I am back and you probably didn't realize it was gone but hey I'm still back anyway in the, behind me right there is 90s kids forever fantastic youtuber someone that I watch a bit of with a song I found her through wet movie one uh, another cool YouTuber. There's a lot of cool YouTuber people out there. Like whether they be bigger, like people like uh, like her, or like the like some of the smaller guys, like some of the guys that I know that that kind of run in a lot of the same circles that I do. Toddy Walnuts collects a lot of the same films that I collect, a lot of the same same blah, 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 same type of stuff. So I tend to like watch like I'll leave the videos for like a couple weeks and then I kind of like binge. And I do that with a lot of people. I'll like oh, it's okay, I'm not gonna watch right away. I'm gonna binge and then I like kind of binge. Them. Uh, Falgar does a lot of, like the uh, streaming videos and stuff like that. Movie Cave Dave does some great stuff. Uh, Logan Toxic, uh, Cinema Sickness, uh, yeah, and Ready does some cool out and aboutts and stuff. And does some Hall stuff. Uh, Robert Harding uh, makes some more uh, kind of like he, he does, he's another Canadian that makes a lot of these type of uh, like type of videos. He goes he goes to like the different stores and Dollaramas. He goes to, like different places as well. Uh, there's just so many of them like that I could. I could be con consistently shouting out forever, and I'll probably do a shout out video down the road. But another thing that makes me happy is watching you guys on YouTube and like getting comments from the guys that comment from me, uh, and that's really really cool. I'm uh, as you guys know, this year is going to be like the year that I go into like uh, to collecting and talking about talking about collecting stuff, talking about collecting uh, Kino Lorber, talking about collecting Veteran Center, like I did, talking about collecting Arrow and Scream Factory, talking about. Uh, Collecting Grindhouse and 88 films and uh, all those stuff. And uh, James recently mentioned to me like a uh, company like uh, a new one, newer one that came up like called Garage, uh, Garage House, something like that. Pictures. Uh, go to my other video and you actually see it in the comment section. So they did like uh, they're on the third trailer trauma one, where it's basically uh, like about three or four hours like of trailers, a trailer tape on like four of 80s horror and, and exploitation and stuff. So kind of looking forward to uh, to checking that out. Um, that's one I'll be grabbing down as well. Draft House. So Draft House actually has some stuff that's fairly cheap. And uh, although the shipping looks to be expensive when you first, like if you're going to buy one movie, if you buy four or five, it's actually really good when you do it. 
So I'll be getting some of their stuff because this is the what TF year for me. Uh, I'll be going more and doing more into the gaming aspect of it as well. So in movies and stuff that I like, I'm, there's, I have like a, it's not really a, a confession, like it's not a, I don't believe in the word guilty pleasures. <clears throat> and here's why, because if, if you like something and you enjoy it, there's pretty much no reason that you should feel guilty about liking or enjoying something. That's kind of your thing, that's your bag, that's what you do, that's what you are into. And one of my favorite series is this one here right now. Is Cruel Intentions trilogy. Uh, if you, you know, read the book Dangerous Liaisons, uh, it's the French novel. And uh, when I was younger, I uh, I read it, and I really liked the uh, the characters a lot. And when I got to uh, to college, in times of that, I had people that would you know call me <laughs> certain characters' name uh, within this. So this is like uh, we got. Cruel Intentions, Cruel Intentions 2, and Cruel Intentions 3. And so it's a three pack. It's put, like done like this. As you can see right there, there's uh, it's Keir Smith, right? He's in the third one, I think. Yeah, Keir Smith. Keir Smith and Christina and Uppo. Uppo got her name right. So it has all three here. So I was looking for this one for a long time. And I found it at a flea market for a uh, for dollar, I think. And uh, so actually in Crow Intentions 3 is right here, Crow Intentions 2, and uh, the original Crow Intentions. When they come out on a Blu-ray set, I'll probably upgrade them again because hopefully they'll have new features. Uh, Crow Intentions recently was new news came out because they were going to do like a series for the for it. Basically, Buffy Buffy came back. Sarah Michelle Geller was in the original Crow Intentions. She was going to be in the new one again, playing a Catherine Martell, uh, and then uh, they had a the pilot. Uh, movie day done and they were you know all excited and they didn't make it past pilot season so that really bothered me I'm a huge fan of of this series I'm a huge fan of Sebastian I'm a huge Belmont fan uh, I have many different versions of Cruel Intentions of Dangerous Liaisons I've got Belmont with Colin Firth I think it's Colin Firth um, so yeah I've got a but this this here this one that was originally done, I guess, for, you know, kind of an updated one for uh, for teens to, like, really get into, like, the classic story. It's really well done, and I really liked it. The first one deals with Ryan Fleet playing Sebastian Vermont, uh, making a bet with his uh, sister-in-law that he wants to sleep with, uh, Catherine, played by Sam Michelle Keller. They're both kind of very libertine-style uh, people. Uh, basically, that's kind of a lifestyle where... Uh, you kind of live outside of the morals of society where pleasure tends to be like your main focus and main goal. Uh, it's something that uh, that was very big, especially around the times of like guys like, uh, uh, okay, like, uh, you know, ext extreme example would be the Marquis de Sade. And again, of course, there's uh, many famous writers, and his name is, oh, his name is like, eluding me right now and it's right on the tip of my tongue oh my god and it's one of my favorite writers and I can't remember his name I'm going to go to my personal cheat sheet hin and if I say Dorian Gray the writer I'm looking for is because it's killing me because it's right on the tip of my tongue it is online too <sighs> Not Byron, because no, he did like, but it is it's that same style. Uh, there's guys right now. I get. I know you guys are screaming at the screen. Uh, Oscar Wilde. Yes, Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that the libertine style lifestyle is something that I'm not gonna lie. I strongly do. I kind of agree with. Uh, the the whole basic idea, not like the extremes of the Marquis de Sade type of thing, but I do like the fact that people living for actual happiness and satisfaction as opposed to getting caught up and letting stuff bog them down. Uh, I think we agree with that, right? I'm not going to have any Roman origins here anytime soon, but you know what I mean. Uh, the basic overall... 
I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Caligula Christmas. <laughs> oh, well, no, my channel takes a different turn. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it's a fantastic little film. Uh, you get to see what happens when uh, somebody like that actually falls in love. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, and their life changes. Unfortunately, uh, in a dramatic way. And trust me, it is very different in reality in a lot of cases that what happens when somebody that has a libertine lifestyle falls in love with the one person. I know. Personally. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, luckily there's no uh, like angry but there was actually a guy that came after me with a shotgun. Um, <laughs> that was a ways back. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I told you guys would learn a lot about me this one. Cruel Intentions 2 was originally called Manchester Prep. It was meant to be like a kind of a, a prequel series uh, to, uh, to it. And just like you see Jonathan Shea in many like uh, prequels and sequels, this actor here by the name of Robin Dunn. Uh, you, you guys probably saw, is this Sanctuary? Is this Sanctuary? That was the series, right? Sanctuary, that was a, that was a Canadian sci-fi series and had the girl from, uh, Amanda Tapping from uh, Stargate, right? But Robin Dunn was the main guy. Uh, yeah, Robin Dunn, I think. I'm pretty sure Robin Dunn was the main guy for Sanctuary. So he was supposed to star as a young Sebastian Vermont here in uh, in Manchester Prep where pretty much where he just, his dad is just married. Uh, to Catherine's mom, he just meets her. Uh, Catherine, this one is actually played by another famous actress, I think, Amy Adams. So there you go. Uh huh. So we got Amy Adams there. I'm pretty sure it's Catherine. This might make a liar. Right no, she's Catherine. She plays Catherine. Um, and uh, we learn how he kind of becomes it. He's, he's a nice guy, uh, and he has a nice guy sensibility to him already. He hasn't come become that like completely like con artist style like uh, seducer that he would later become uh, in the uh, when we watch the original uh, film, which is Cruel Intentions 1. So you can actually watch two before you watch one and kind of go into it like that. Uh, Ro Robin Dunn does actually a very good job of like the Ryan Fleet style character. I do like it. I'm actually going to be watching these actually very soon. Uh, I do like these movies. I tend to watch these frequently. Uh, the third one is really, it's kind of different. We're not looking at Catherine or or Sebastian anymore. It's kind of in the future. It's uh, not in the future. Not, <laughs> they're not in space or anything. Uh, but it's like uh, after the... Uh, first movie uh, we meet the uh, cousin of uh, Catherine and we find out that she's a character that actually kind of idolized Catherine a bit wanted to be a lot like her uh, we meet Keir Smith's character they're both very much like the Sebastian and Catherine characters in uh, Cruel Intentions you know with new names so. and they have their own story there's kind of a twisted like like storyline in here it deals with all kinds of stuff we meet like um, so uh, Jason well, there's this guy that comes along and he's kind of like a darker version of uh, of Sebastian, where he plays like uh, he really plays it up. He actually plays this kind of like this nerdy kind of like nebbishy type character that he uses to seduce uh, girls with that he's not at all. That's completely unlike him, but he's a very much he's the flip side side of what they are. He's not like the the nice side. He is the Marquis Sad style of the uh, of this of this thing. He's like the dark going to like get his. Uh, at the cost of other people. Um, so there's kind of revenge plot that comes into this here. It's just really well, there's a lot of twists and turns. If you ever watch any of those Wild Things movies, there's a series of those as well. Then you know, it'll be kind of like, uh, you kind of get the feel of like, uh, there's the bat and there's a twist to this and there's a twist to that. And we're like, there's characters that kind of come in and out. I really enjoyed it. A lot of people like, you know, didn't didn't like it as much because it wasn't, you know, it, wasn't this, it definitely wasn't the same thing. But I did really enjoy the way that it was done. And uh, it's overall, great series of films. So there you go, the Cruel Intentions trilogy. And I'm hoping that if even if they don't put out this, the new series, can we get somebody to like actually put out the pilot? I would love to see like the pilot and find out what happens uh, to Catherine, what she's doing now, uh, especially after part one. See this new character Bash, which is the son of uh, of the two of two characters from the uh, from the first Cruel Intentions, and. Uh, it, it's such a shame that they didn't pick that up. And with so many sites out there, like, uh, I'm hoping maybe Amazon or someone will pick it up. Because uh, I really, I really want to see. That's a, that's like a, a universe that, that I do follow and that I want to see more of. 
But there you go. That's one of my favorite series of all time. Um, I'll be right back with one other thing that's a, that's a favorite of mine that we're going to talk about. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. So uh, this is a big Boxing Day uh, or pre-Boxing Day for me. Favorite Things Podcast. I'll be right back. Hey there, and I am back, and for the last portion of the video, I wanted to talk about one other thing that I love a lot, and that is, I love comics. You guys know that I love, like, I talked about DC Rebirth when the New 52 came out. You know I did a lot of New 52 stuff, but there's one comic series that trumps it all. It was kind of like a magazine style comic, and then they started putting them out in addition, so I'm missing one edition right now. Uh, there's probably a lot more out, but I, out of the ones I got, I'm missing, like, one, so... That's the Savage Sword of Conan. I'm a huge fan of Robert E. Howard. I really did like John Carter uh, film that came out, and I was hoping they'd follow it up. They didn't. Please follow it up. Uh, but, uh, Savage made a magazine series called Savage Sword of Conan. It had more, like, kind of adult themes to it. There was a lot more, you know, it could be darker, it could be a lot of death, a lot of monsters and stuff. It could be a lot of real cool killing. And, uh, that uh that I really enjoy. Uh so it's it's kind of a fantasy thing. It's my fantasy thing. Like she grew up like reading like I guess reading Tolkien and uh she's a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Those movies for him are like the that's her like super uh, right up there with, with with Star Wars. Those are her trilogies. Uh she puts them kind of on the same thing. I'm like Star Wars Trumps. But she, you know, that's her thing. That's her fantasy uh world, right? Tolkien is your fantasy world. She loves Tolkien. Uh she even liked the Hobbit movies. Not a lot of people like Hot Movies, but she, she, she enjoyed Hot Movies. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> then again, not less people <laughs> like John Carter. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. <clears throat> but, so, you know, I've got her favorites. Um, so I've been collecting these Dark Horse collections. Uh, I've only got five of uh, of six volumes that I know that are out. So I have the first one here, Savage Shard of Conan. I'm going to open this up, too, by the way. That some of the artwork on this, well, like the artwork on the set in Conan is incredible. I'm just going to show you like a cover first and then we're going to go like we'll go from there because it's just such amazing amazing stuff that they did. So that's just like one poster there and as you can see I'm just going to go through a few pages there to show you guys some of the uh, magnificent artwork that's within this one here. And it follows through. So this one here has actually the first uh, one through five Savage Shirt of Conan through tales, Savage Tales of Barbarian issues, and then it goes for the uh, 1 through 10 of the Savage Show of Conan, originally published by Marvel. So, uh, really cool. We got like people that did the art on this Barry Winter Smith, John Bosimi, uh, Alfredo Alcala, James Starlin, uh, Al Milgram, Pablo Marcos, Walter Sim Simonson. Uh, just, uh, of course, you know, written by uh, Tales written by Roy Thomas. Uh, you know those names. At all, then you know how impressive that uh, that this is. We have some great stuff in here. It's red nails in this one. I think it is actually. Frost Giant's daughter is in here. Uh, we got like cover art by Boris Vallejo. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Conan stories is Red Nails, and uh, if you know the story, then uh, then you know. Yes, here Red Nails for one part. Uh, it's a uh, it's just an incredible story, and it really tells the like the brutality. You really get the brutality of the character and where they're going to go with it. When you uh, when you see that because uh, and Red Nails was done by uh, who did the artwork? It's Pablo Ma Marcos did the cover. I don't know that much, uh, but the interior I think was done by Barry Smith by Barry Winter Smith. So you can see both the cover by Pablo Marcos there and some of the interior art done by uh, Barry Winter Smith. You can see how detailed and amazing the cover art was. So that's uh, volume one. I also have like uh, volume two, which actually collects eleven through twenty four. Of the uh, of the issues and just uh, and the cool thing about this, a lot of times you see these essentials ones and they'll be like, oh, but it's in black and white. I want the original color. These were done in black and white, so that's actually very uh, kind of cool aspect of that as well. So, I guess again, the savage sort of Conan. Uh, this is like before King Conan and all that stuff, and this is very much darker than like the Conan that you'll see in the movies, like any of the movies. Like uh, really, this is where you want to merge yourself. Like if you at all like the Conan films, they're not just, they're not jokey. Like the Conan films are, you know, they're, they're they're darker. There's just such amazing stuff to uh, to them. Some of the, a lot of the artwork here is like just utterly fantastic. Again, we have uh, 
Let me get some more people. Mike Zek comes in to do some work on this one here. John Desimi does some as well. We got uh, Tim Conrad, uh, Boris, uh, Sonny Trinidad. Uh, you know, just some great some some great artists come in to do for the uh, for the do do work on that second volume. Third volume goes from the issues 24 to 36. Uh, and uh, even we get the haunting adaption of Robert E. Howard's Samaria poem. And uh, just some great stuff in here as well. Uh, again, you know, Dick Giordano, Frank Bruner, Ernie Chan, Carmine Infantino, Carmine Infantino. And Carmine, Inf uh, Carmine Infantino is known as being like the, the Flash artist. If you recently have been watching The Flash, you'll notice there's, an a, there's a, a, a part in one of the episodes where he stops and he's at Infantino Avenue, uh, which is really cool. Uh, but there's, again, like, just look at the art. It is incredible. And it is, really is a fantasy world to, like, really, like, lose yourself into. I can, I just sit down, I read these, and they're just such, so much amazement, so much great fantasy aspects to it. And the uh, start of the, oh, here we go. Like, remember. I remember the dark woods masking scope slopes of somber hills, the gray clouds leaden everlasting arch, the dusty streams that followed without a sound, and the lone winds that pass, the whispered down the passes, vista on vista marching hills on hills, slope beyond slope, each dark with sown trees. So when a man climbed up a rugged peak and gazed, his shaded eyes saw but the endless vista, slope beyond slope, each hooded like its brother, it was a gloomy land that seemed to hold all winds and clouds and dreams that shunned the sun, with bare boughs rattling in the windy and the lonesome winds and the dark woodlands brooding over all, not even lighted by the rare dim sun. That's part of Samara. Right? Smokey? See, is there a video that I can make now that doesn't have a, uh, a cameo by this, by this kitty cat? I don't think so. So, here we go. Feeling good? Good. Say hi. You're on camera. You're a star. You want you want to read the next one? <laughs> Volume four is <sighs> got some, some great artists in here as well. Uh, we get Gil Kane doing work, doing work in here. Klaus Jansen, of course, who did some fantastic work on Daredevils, uh, does some work in here. This is issues thirty-seven to forty-eight. Uh, we're looking at the treasure uh, of, of Trenicos, the Sons of the White Wolf, Lately Gins of the Dead. So, uh, some really, really cool ones here. Uh, he said, however, the, the sprawling, ambitious adaption of Conan, the Buccaneer novel, uh, is uh, with uh, to Roy Thomas, John Basim, and Tony Zaniga. Really is where uh, is this volume shines. And uh, it'd be great, actually. I haven't read this one yet, so it'd be really cool. I've probably read all these stories, but I haven't read them through this volume. Yet, so that's volume four. And recently I picked up, as you guys know, I got Christmas was volume six uh, of the Savage Story of Conan. And really, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, again, we have a lot of the, the uh, famous artists that did uh, work on the other ones. This is 61 through 71. Uh, there's some great pinups here. We got some work from uh, Alex Toth, of course, who created some uh, fantastic uh, stuff like uh, Space Ghost and uh, characters like that for uh, Hanna, for basically uh, for Hanna-Barbera. But there we go. This is one of my favorites. The Savage Sword of Conan. And the final shot. So there you go, guys. Those are a few of my favorite things. Without singing like Julie Andrews, I got it through in just a little over, a little under an hour. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Aaron. I hope this down here is Smokey who's headbutting me for pets. Uh, I hope you guys have had a great day. You're having a great box today. Hopefully you guys will see me back here, inshallah, tomorrow when I uh, do my Boxing Day haul. Thanks for watching. And for me right now, it is time to like finish that video. Do some shoveling. Yeah, it's time for shoveling. But first, it's time for tea.
Hey there, and thank you for staying for the after credit sequence. So let's look at little Doctor Who trivia pursuit. So you got a card here, got like a Dalek, it's a different color Dalek. So we're gonna roll this. How to get blue? Okay. Yeah, what was the name of the street in London that house the first scrapyard that the first Doctor lived on? Uh, man, it's been a while. Totter? Trotter? Totter, right? Yeah, Totter's Lane. Yeah, the scrapyard itself is called I Am Foreman's. Of course, for Susan Foreman. So let's do another one of those. So, Totter. I almost said Trotter. You know why I said Trotter? Only kills and horses. You guys that know me and understand that, I'm a really big fan of that. In which story was Davros first introduced? Well, that would be Genesis of the Daleks with Tom Baker, uh, the fourth Doctor, his companions at the time. Were Harry and Sarah Jane, because I don't want to be really obnoxious about entering into the same one. And it is, of course, Genesis of the Daleks. So let's just do one more before I go. Uh, yellow, what do we got here? Complete the story title, The Hand of Fear, right? Yep, that is the very last story for Sarah Jane, actually, uh, in the original Doctor Who series. She, she leaves Sarah Jane. Uh, he pretty much tells her that he has to go on his own. The next episode is actually one of my favorites because it's the Deadly Assassins, the only original series uh, Doctor Who episode that actually has a solo Doctor without a companion and it brings back the character of the Master who would would been killed off because unfortunately the actor that played him at the time, Roger Delgado, had uh, passed on as well. So there we go. If you uh, were at your local bookstore and you can see, or gaming store, and you see this here, uh, Trevor Pursuit Doctor Who game, if you're a Fan of Doctor Who, it's definitely worth picking up. It's in like a uh, housed in like a uh, what shape to be like one of those Trevor Pursuit like uh, nub type of things. It's just uh, cards. It's got the uh, it's got this here, this uh, this die, and you're ready to play Doctor Who and have some fun and maybe make a drinking game out of it. Like for me, it's probably going to be a, a pretty tame drinking game. I've only got like uh, I bought like three like beers, ales to basically have over Christmas. New Year's type thing because I don't really drink a lot so I just bought three cans of stuff that I that I like and uh, if you look at my Instagram you can see it because I think my Instagram is what thinks charmed 007 <laughs> oh my god you're back you're like like Michael or Jason you just keep coming back there is no way to stop you you are like in Criticat you're a Terminator fan. I know so guys apparently Smokey said wrap it up it's time to go. You got shoveling to do. I think Smokey was sent over here covertly by him to let me know that I have the shovel. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. For me right now, it's uh, time for tea. And uh, Smokey says, as Smokey looks at the window at the snow, I got a shovel. <laughs>